picked off at the 49-yard line by Logan it's Ryan. Intercepted! Logan Ryan at the 40. He's ruled down at that point. Logan Ryan! Logan Ryan, his fourth INT. What has surprised you the most about the Titans' defense this season? I just love what we're doing on the stage. The goal line stands. They're not surprises to me, but it just shows the toughness that we have in this group. Uh, we've had multiple goal line stands this season. That last one, you didn't know how big it was until the final score. So that was great. That was huge. Rashawn Evans and everybody did a great job there. No matter how the game's going, we believe in our defense. We have a confident defense. I still think we're a defensive football team, even though we have like the MVP over there on offense. So we got a lot of pride in our defense. Now you mentioned Rashawn Evans, and I wanted to ask you about him. Seeing him grow up from year one to year two, what do you think is the biggest change that you've seen in him? Just being a linebacker, being an NFL linebacker is a, is a tough job. You have to be really smart. You have to learn. It takes years to, to be good at the position. And I just think he's in the process of that. I mean, the physicality, his passion, the way he's able to hit. He's a violent human being, and I'm glad that he plays football for a living. But I just think all the other stuff, the communication within the defense is something that takes years to master. And I think he's taken the steps necessary to be a, a really good linebacker in this league. So his performance on that goal line stand didn't surprise you at all? No, no, that's, that's uh, we call him Razor Blade, and that's, that's Razor Blade for a reason. It's not a secret that the defensive backs have been struggling with some injuries a little bit. And obviously there's a lot of depth at that position, guys that you trust to be out on the field. How does it impact the chemistry, though, and the way that you guys work when someone goes out like an Adoree Jackson or a Malcolm Butler? Right. Uh, I think that's been something that... Uh, I had to learn, you know, I played with Adore and Malcolm for so many years in my career. They're probably the only two corners I've played with and Malcolm for obviously a lot of years in two organizations and Adore since I've been here. And I didn't real realize the chemistry until they were gone, um, how that might play. But I mean, we got a lot of depth in, in the secondary. A lot of guys have made game winning plays that we've talked about, Kalu's plays and LaShawn Sims and Ty Smith punching out fumbles when he got a chance to play and Tremaine Brock coming over here learned the defense in a matter of days and been a starter ever since. So we got a special group on that side and we've had some injuries, but it's great having Adoree back. That's like my brother back there and he's able to pick up for me on things I don't even tell him about, uh, be able to communicate. We can kind of read each other's minds in that sense. So it's great having him back. He always keeps it light and fun, obviously, but uh, everyone stepped in and done a great job, obviously. The Ravens describe their offense as revolutionary. What have you seen in maybe the brief study that you've done on that, that team? Uh, Lamar Jackson special, and uh, they're good at running the ball, which helps you win games normally. And it's not revolutionary, it's just option football, college option football, done really well with professional athletes. So it's revolutionary because it's working in the NFL, I guess, but we have our work cut out for us for sure. They're the number one team in the AFC for a reason. So we'll be big underdogs, but I think uh, we smile when we hear that because I mean, I think nothing's better than being an underdog and playing with house money. A guy like Lamar Jackson, as you mentioned, he's a great player, could be the league's MVP this year. He can get you through the air. He can get you with his legs. There's so many different things he can do. What do you do as a defensive guy to contain him? You do your job. You do what the defense asks you to do. I mean, no matter, I mean, no matter who you're playing against, every team, it seems like every quarterback we play this year is a Hall of Famer or a former MVP or someone who's a pro bowler. I mean, I think we've played them all. They're all good, and he's just, he's just as good as all of them, if not better. So we're just gonna believe in ourselves and, and play tight in football and make it physical, get gritty out there, get the ball back to our offense and let them pound the rock away and uh, keep the same formula we've been having of just playing, you know, winning football. You mentioned it earlier, but another week, another week that the Titans are expected to be the underdogs in this game. Is that a place that you're growing to enjoy, being the underdog? Personally, I never feel like an underdog. I have a lot of confidence in myself, but I think you can rally behind it. And when you're the sixth seed in the AFC and you had to win the last week while these teams were resting, that's what it is. But we're in the tournament and we're here to make a run in the tournament. We're here to have fun. We're happy to be in the tournament. And we love playing in the wild card and I think we were the better team. So I don't think the seeds matter anymore. I think it's what you do on that day. Whoever the underdog, whoever the favorite is, it doesn't matter. It all matters what you do in between the, in the white lines. And um, you can make your name for yourself in the playoffs for sure. And I think we're taking advantage of that. And I think that we have a big test ahead of us. And I think we're excited.